Question one. Notice it's um, uh, multiple choice. Number one in your homework. Net, no. Num wait, we'll get this. We'll get it. We're going to get there. Number one. Negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 1 sixth. We're going to be using the multiplication property on this, which includes division. I can get x by itself if I divide both sides of this inequality by negative 2. So that's what I'm going to do. And I know these guys cancel, leaving me with an X, but I'm going to be dividing by a negative number, which means I am going to turn my sign around. And the rest of this I can do in a calculator or by hand. But let's do the calculator. Negative 1.6 divided by negative 2. So negative 1.6 divided by negative 2. Enter. And that's positive. Positive 0.8. I'm going to say 0 0.8, just to be absolutely sure. And notice we changed the sign around because we divided by a negative number. So x is less than or equal to 0 0.8. Now, here, Here are your possible solutions. I want to make them a little bit bigger. Good, so you can see. You have the solution set is X bar X greater than, strict, uh, a greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or less than. We have over here less than or equal to, so it's going to be D that I need but I need to put the number in as well, and it will be 0 0.8. And then we'll hold our breath and click on check answer. One or more of your responses is incorrect. Well, what do they want? Select the, oh, oh. Ah, it's that one. Dog got it. All right. Never mind. All right. This one is less than or equal to. I thought that one was less than or equal to. So I changed my answer to C. Yay! Yay! Okay. I'm not going to go to the next answer immediately. I'm going to see if there are any questions about this. Notice I got more than one chance to get a wrong answer. In fact, I get three chances to get a wrong answer before I'm told I'm wrong. But I'm usually given the opportunity to select a similar problem and then try to get that one right. In which case, if I do, then my math lab does not count my problem wrong. Counts it right. Only counts the second one. So you could get 100% on your homework. I have a question. Uh, yes. I've been doing all the um, questions and assignment, getting them right, but the sum, for some reason it's not giving me the 400 points. Is it because I'm not watching the videos? That's right. You have to watch the videos too. Okay. But they are helpful. OK, thank you. OK, anybody else? OK, 
okay. I'm Next. having problems when I add in a positive signs. Where can I go like in the uh, book to review those? Because most of my homework, I did a lot of mistake with my positive and negative signs. Um, in the R section, you'll learn about positive and negative signs. That's one place. In the R section of the book. I'll show you after class, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Anybody else? Okay, I'm going to go to the next problem. Uh, now, we have a kind of a mixed problem here. There. There it is. 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 3x minus 1. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, I have a problem with this problem. I'm going to show you the way they work it. I'm going to show you the way I work it. So I'm going to do it their way first. Number two. Two X minus three. Is greater than or equal to. Three X. Minus. One. OK, what they do. Is they want to keep their X positive. So what they do is they leave their 3X over here and they subtract 2X from both sides of the inequality. Nothing wrong with that. That'll be zero minus three on the left. And if I have three X's and I take away two X's, I have only one X left and I bring down my minus one. So that now I'll have zero minus three is negative three is greater than or equal to X minus one. Now I have to get these two constants together on the other side. So I'm going to add one and add one to both sides. Negative three plus one, you can use your calculator and you'll have negative Two is greater than or equal to X minus one plus one. Minus one plus one is zero. So that's going to leave me just X. So I have, but I'll, I'll write X plus zero just to keep it clear for now. And what that's going to be is negative two is greater than or equal to X. Now, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. But we have to change the sign because we're working with a negative number. Just wait and see. This is okay. the way they've worked it. And if you come down here. You'll notice. Let me bring this up. 
Oh, you have to answer it one at a time. Never mind. Um, you're going to find that this is what they do, and then they have one more step. This is the way my math lab worked it, which, and I disagree with it, okay? But it's still the right answer. Their last step, when the variable is on the right hand side, is to turn the ent entire problem around. Turn it around 180 degrees. X is less than or equal to negative two. So you have to remember to do that because we don't leave it written like this with the variable on the right hand side when we're working with inequalities. At the end, the variable always has to be on the left. Now, the way I was taught to work it, and it's a way I like much better. Okay, I'm gonna come down. This is Barb's way. Which of course is better because I'm the teacher. Barb's way. I'm joking. We're going to do the whole thing over again the way I would do it. I was taught, make sure that your variables are always on the left-hand side, no matter what, when you're working with inequalities. So, here we go. 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 3x minus 1. Okay, now here's how I was taught to do a problem like this. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides because no matter what, your x's always go to the left when you're working an inequality problem. So 2x's minus 3x's is negative 1x. The best way to do this is to put 2 minus 3 in your calculator and you'll get a negative 1. And bring down minus 3. Is greater than or equal to 0 minus 1. So that's what I've got right now. Okay, I've got one variable term. It's here. I now have a constant here and a constant here. A number without a variable is called a constant. I'm going to add 3 to both sides of this inequality. Negative three plus three is zero. I'll have negative one, x plus zero is greater than or equal to positive two. Zero minus one is negative one, negative one plus three is positive two. And again, your calculator can do that for you very easily. So negative one X plus zero is negative one X is greater than or equal to two. Now, I divide by negative one. I divide by negative one and I turn the sign around. Negative one and negative one cancel, leaving me with X less than or equal to two divided by negative one is negative two. 
And so when I get to the end, I don't have an extra step. When I get to the end, I have X less than or equal to negative two, and I'm ready to choose my answer. Whereas up here, they get this, but then they have to make, take an extra step to make that, to make this, which is their final, semi-final answer, what the, um, what my math lab accepts and what mathematicians <clears throat> accept as a final answer for these. The X always has to be on the left, period. So you're free to choose the method that you want, but any way you look at it, this is your answer. Let me pull it up. X is less than or equal to negative two. It's possible to work problems with different methods, still get the same answer. It's a matter of individual choice. OK. So that's number two. Let me put a little box around it. Two ways for the price of one. Not bad. OK, yes, I didn't remember whether I had created a new sheet for the new work. No, I'm keeping it all together. OK, now. Now here, wait a second. It's getting near the end. So let's just go through here and get to the next set. Oh, let's do this. Well, you already know how to do it, but yeah, let's do it anyway. We've got negative, uh-uh, what -uh, black? Negative seven over two X is greater than or equal to negative five fourths. Okay, I will multiply both sides by the um, reciprocal of negative seven over two, which is going to be negative two over seven, and over here, negative two over seven. On the left, we will have negative times negative is positive. The twos cancel, the sevens cancel, and that leaves me with X greater than or equal uh, 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 because I just multiplied by a negative number. No, no, no. I have to turn that around. Now, there are a couple of different ways to work this. I'm just going to work it. The, the most, the quickest way. Negative times negative is positive. Five times two is 10. Over four times seven is 28. 
And then I know that this needs to be reduced because I can even see that two goes into 10 and two goes into eight, but I propose to, um, to do something. To get my calculator. And what I'm going to do is type 10 over 10 divided by 28. 10 divided by 28, and I click on the math button, and I click on 1 for frac, and I click on enter. And it tells me, no, 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 5 over 14 is the most correct answer. So X is less than or equal to 5 over 14. The little box around it. Okay, okay. No, I need to get to a particular kind of problem now. Here, parentheses, because it's actually 1140. Can you believe that? Maybe you're bored to tears, but I'm having a great time. I can't believe time has gone so fast. So, here's the problem. Four parentheses, two y minus five is greater than or equal to three parentheses, five y plus eight. This is a distribution problem. <clears throat> So I am going to, let me get another color here, red. Four times two y, four times negative five, or minus five. So four times two y is eight y, and four times minus five is minus 20. Greater than or equal to, 3 times 5y, and 3 times 8. That will be 15y plus 24. You have to get rid of your parentheses first by distributing. That's what it's called to take the 4 and multiply it by both terms in the parentheses to take the three and multiply it by both terms in parentheses. Now, doing it my way, I now am going to move all my variables over to the left, net minus 15y and minus 15y. Let me make this bigger now. That'll leave a zero over here, zero plus 24. Now 8y minus 15y, go to your calculator and put in eight minus 15, you'll get negative seven. Y minus 20 equals zero plus 24, which is 24. Now I'm going to add a constant term here over to the constant term there. 
plus 20, plus 20, negative 20 plus 20 is zero on the left side here. Um, so I'll have negative 7y plus zero is greater than or equal to 24 plus 20 or zero plus 24 plus 20 is 44. So negative 7y greater than or equal to 44. Then I, I really, well, negative 7y divided by negative 7, turn sign around, 44 divided by negative 7. And I cancel, 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 cancel. I'm left with a y. I turn my sign around. And so, negative 44 over 7, I don't believe can be reduced. But we're going to find out anyway. We're going to make sure by putting it in the calculator. Hello, calculator. Where are you? There you are. Clear. Negative 44 divided by 7. Math. Rack. Enter. Nope. It stays negative 44 over 7. Okay, so you can't really work the problem until you eliminate your parentheses. And you can only do that by distributing. Okay. See the what time. would be the interval notation of that? Interval no ha. OK, here's what I would do. I would take negative 44 divided by 7. Enter. That's to give me a general idea of about where I would put um, uh, negative 44 over 7. Then, just to make sure I had it right. Here's zero, here's infinity, here's negative infinity, and now what was that? That was about negative 6.3, about, not exact. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, Negative 6.3 would be about here. So, uh, yeah, and that's a bracket. So I would have a bracket. And I'm assuming, uh, yeah, negative 6.3, oh, uh, no. Negative 44.7. This is assuming I would have to graph it. I'm sorry. I could have just gone like this. Okay, it's going to go to the left forever from negative 44 over 7. So I know that what's to the left forever? Negative uh, infinity. Negative 44 over 7. But here you can actually see it. So I had no reason to graph it. I apologize. I could have just written it out like that. If I stopped to think, okay, 
we're saying that y is any number to the left of negative 44 over 7 or equal to. So that means the y's are all going to be going to the left from negative 44 over 7. So I would know that negative infinity would be my left end point, if it could be an end point, which it cannot. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Now I'm going to take roll and you all will be free to go. And if somebody wants to stay around and ask questions, we'll do that also. <laughs>